Chief 219th Red Horse Squadron. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the entrance of the official party, presentation of the colors by the 120th Airlift Wing, Honor Guard, and remain standing for the singing of the national anthem by Staff Sergeant Joe Leinard, followed by the invocation given by Chaplain Lieutenant Colonel McCaffrey. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Chaplain McCaffrey. Please join me in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we have gathered here today to honor General Ronick and the many successes that have brought him to this joyful occasion. We pray for your continued blessing and inspiration upon him. Grant him the wisdom, the strength, the knowledge, and the endurance as he continues to fight for the, the, the longevity, the capabilities for the Air National Guard in Montana. We pray, Lord, that his work will not just bring strength to the Air National Guard, but the entire Montana National Guard, and the strength to the state of Montana for the good of all of America. We also ask, Lord, that you'll be with the Ronick family. We thank you for the Ronick family and all they have done. Please give them health, safety, and peace of mind. We ask this because you're wonderful, and we ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sergeant Leinart and Chaplain McCaffrey. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce to you the presiding official for today's ceremony, Lieutenant General Michael Lowe. Hey folks, is this a great day or what? We're up in Big 
Sky Country, or I'm up in Big Sky Country. More to say, you all live here. Thanks for having me. And Hoops, we've been, uh, we've been at this together for over two decades. Thanks for allowing me to officiate mm. this ceremony. <laughs> nah. We'll get to that. We'll get to a little bit of him in a second. Governor Bowling, thanks for being here. As Commander in Chief of the Guard, we know you're a staunch supporter. Also, thanks. Uh, you chaired the National Governors Association. That's the first time we met when I was the Adjutant General of State, great state of Colorado. And so thanks a lot for doing that. And also the Council of Governors work. I know it means a lot to not only the family here, but to the Guard family and Guard Nation of all your support. Thanks for being here today. Hey, uh, General Quinn, Matt, boy, we had, uh, uh, let's see, it was uh, uh, a little over eight weeks ago, nine weeks ago, when I was his Vice President of Air for the Adjutant General's Association. Him as the president, me as the vice president. And we, we used to always say, hey, look at what they did to us again. And now, I'm going to start with sorry, maybe, or, or, or at least this relationship. But thanks for the leadership of the Adjutant Generals. Um, we have probably almost 40 new, I think 40 new Adjutant Generals. So out of the 54, there's 40 new ones, which means that you have a lot of training and education to do to make sure that we do it right. And then you, you I know you have me on speed dial because that's happened before. So if, if you do, please, uh, please let me know how, how uh, we are doing now. <laughs> All right, to the other general officers, the chiefs, colonels, and of course to the family. Thanks. Uh, this has been a, an amazing day. I'll start, uh, I'll start with my arrival show here in a second. Um, but it's great to see the Montana National Guard and especially the Air National Guard. Um, this, this organization has a wonderful history, and, uh, and it's born on decades of hard work and the legacy of those folks that came before us. So thank you for all you do to continue that legacy of greatness. And I know it's not been easy, but I'll do that as I kind of run through a little bit of history of where uh, Hoops has been and what he's been doing. So thanks. All right. So I arrived here yesterday, got off the airport, he meets me in a pair of shorts and flip-flops. A t-shirt, and he goes, uh, hey, hurry up. We got to go see Tracy, and, uh, and uh, we're going on a little sale. And we got there, put the sails up, and he goes, here you go. The boat is yours. <laughs> and for the next couple hours, I got the sail around Montana, and it was absolutely wonderful. And then we pull up into the dock. We didn't have to swim to shore. Uh, that was good. <laughs> go see this wonderful lake house, his little lake house, mm. right, that, uh, well, he took care of the cabin and built this beautiful lake house. Mm. And then, Tracy, I can't thank you enough. I mean, really. Thanks for everything you did last night for us, and then thanks for also supporting him throughout all these years. All right. And now, um, hoops. <laughs> <laughs> it was back flying F-16s probably two decades ago when we first met. And, uh, and he and I were out there uh, battling over how good the F-16 was in this thing called the Rocky Mountain Coalition. And we'd, uh, we'd work together with Colorado, Montana, on how we were going to deploy air power overseas and how we were going to get into these rotations and do it effectively. And that's what he's been doing. Where did he start out, though? He started out right here. He started out in the great state of Montana as a guard baby. And they sent him off to pilot training. And he came back. And I know <laughs> he is the only person still in uniform and still active that flew a Century Series fighter, the F-106. <laughs> and he did that for uh, Uh-huh. I know. Uh, what are you? Old guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it was also in this unit that he met his lovely wife, Tracy. They are a guard love story. <laughs> and that guard family has grown with five kids, three of which still serve in the National Guard. That's pretty doggone amazing. And the other two serve in other ways. So it is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Now. If every guard love story could bring in three more members mm -hmm. into the Montana Guard, it would yep. be awesome. Yep. <laughs> okay. After that, he went on to fly F-16s. You all know him around here because you've seen him. I mean, heck, if you've done some manuscript, logistics group, ops group, obviously wing commander, 
Everybody has worked with him, for him, or mentored him along the way. And I know there's a lot of people out there virtually who have probably mentored him and are probably wondering, what the heck has he been doing? Well, he's been flying F-16s. And then about the time he uh, made wing commander, we said, hey, here's a mission change for you. Get rid of those F-16s that you've been doing such a great job with. And when I say such a great job, because normally as the active duty hands us missions down, and this was actually back in 91, the active duty Air Force went to 525,000 active, active duty airmen, down to 395,000 active duty airmen in the span of three years. They cut 130,000. The wall had fallen, okay? We were pulling things out of Europe, and of course, the Montana National Guard stood up and said, we want to be out of the 106, because Desert Storm was over, and they didn't take it. Imagine that. And we want to be in the F-16. And so, he was here as one of those young guys, transitioning in the F-16. He took care of the F-16 and got some of the oldest jets off the active duty, because they weren't going to give us that. And then between the ops and the maintainers, they brought those up to a standards of excellence that you can't even imagine. And by about the time he became wing commander, we said, enough of that. Hey, how about some really old F-15s? Mm -hmm. And we're going to transition you into F-15s. And what a leadership challenge that is, transitioning from an F-16 to an F-15. And again, it takes a guard unit about two or three years and a few cycles to get up to par because we do get the oldest air equipment. And of course, now we lift it up and make it really, really good. While still in commander, guess what? We're going to put you through another transition. And we're going to give you some really old C 130s. And they're sitting out on the ramp today. They've gone through about two cycles of, uh, of what we call heavy maintenance. And after those two cycles of heavy maintenance, I got to tell you, those are some really pristine birds. Now, what does that cause on a unit like Montana? It causes huge challenges. Not only a cultural fit from going 15 to 16, but a cultural fit from going combat air forces to mobility air forces. There's a reason why there's an air combat command and an air mobility command. Because putting those two things together sometimes doesn't necessarily mesh. And the challenges that he had as wing commander were unbelievable as that occurred. And so, oops, through your leadership, this unit owes you a debt of gratitude because those ops, maintainers, logistics, everybody in the organization is now absolutely up to par. And they continue to deliver ex excellence for our nation. They really do. But you've gone through that. Also, during that time, he did other things like a couple of tours in Iraq, okay, where we took him away from the family. Thank you again. <laughs> and, uh, and so that's where we left. Then, of course, General Quinn says, hey, enough playing around. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. I need you to come down and be with me. I need you to come down and help and be the commander of the Montana Air National Guard. And so continue to lead the way in Montana. And then at the same time, we kept asking for your service back in DC. First off is, uh, quite frankly, he'd fill, he'd fill in as the director of the Air National Guard as the director has gone away, and also as the deputy director of the Air National Guard. And then we asked him the first time, hey, come into this wonderful shop called the A58 shop and do all, all the planning and programming for the Air National Guard. First time. Then he came back home to that wonderful lake house and wonderful family. And then we said, hey, oh, by the way, we still have another vacancy and we have more challenges. So will you come back out? And this one was supposed to be for just a couple months. How long was it, Tracy? The longest ever. <laughs> the longest ever. <laughs> yep, the longest ever. It was years. Yeah. It was years. <laughs> and we took it away again. So I got to tell you, I, I can't thank our families enough because they are the ones that sacrifice and, and really do sacrifice. And I know you visited him out there in Washington, D.C. in his lovely basement house. No, yeah. He stayed in a basement out there. But here's what he did for us, and here's what he did for you. 
The Air National Guard, you know it's out, out in the 54, and I know I'm preaching to the choir. But we have 155 installations, 1,080 aircraft, 107,700 air. That's your Air National Guard. And we said, hey, Hoops, here's what I need you to do. I need you to go out there and plan their requirements. I need you to go out there and get $13 billion a year to make sure that they can do everything they need to do, ops, maintenance, training, personnel. I need you to go out there and make sure the equipment is absolutely the finest, OK? And if you go look at what's going on, under his watch and leadership, brand new, not hand-me-downs from the Air Force, brand new F-35 went into Vermont, brand new KC-46s went into Pease. We just announced brand new F-35 into Montgomery, into Madison, Wisconsin, and into Jacksonville, and brand new F-15EXs into Klamath and into Portland. So instead of the hand-me-downs, this guy said, I've learned the lessons right here in Montana, and I'm taking them back to Washington, D.C., and I'm going to get the guard brand new airplanes. <laughs> Next new ones that'll be coming off the line are C-130Js. So it's good. And if you want to come back, you know you got to hold back. <laughs> okay. So it, that is exceptional results. A lot of people can go up there and just kind of make things happen, but you delivered results. And that's a huge testament to you. So now, with that, of course, good work gets more work. And that's why we're here, and we'll promote him here in a second. But he's going to go down, well living here, and go be the Air National Guard assistant to the commander of Air Education and Training Command. So the first command. First command we all went into, AETC. And so instead of being in Washington, D.C., he's going to be in a great place of San Antonio, Texas. So Tracy, in about two months, that may be a very desirable location <laughs> to go visit. <laughs> and he's still going to always be up here. So I'm going to charge an AETC to make sure that our airmen, our National Guard airmen, are well trained, well cared for, that they have the right equipment, and that they get the right training slots. And of course, we know he delivers. And because of that additional responsibility, your shoulders are looking really light. <laughs> and I think it's time, and a well-deserved time, for a promotion. <laughs> so, Hoops, are you ready? Yeah, absolutely. All right. <laughs> Come on up here, and let's get this going. Thank you, General Lowe. Well, General Ronick already beat me. General Ronick, please move to your position on the stage. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as General Lowe promotes General Ronick to the rank of Major General and directs the publishing of promotion order. Publish the order. Attention to orders. Special order GO-M-233-20-01, dated 20 August 2020, by the order of the Secretary of the Air Force and direction of the President, Brigadier General John P. Ronick II is promoted to the rank of Major General effective 1 September 2020. Signed, Daniel R. Hokinson, General, U.S. Air Force, Chief, National Guard Bureau. Thank you, General Lowe. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Would Tracy and Luke, who will be placing the jacket insignia, please come forward for placing the insignia. I don't have my tag.
How's that cast help with? It's going. <laughs> I think it looks kind of good the other side. Just, just poke it. Just poke it. Just poke you. Ah. <laughs> There you go. Good job. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> My heck's my. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy and Luke. Now we ask Jordan and Taylor, who will be placing the shirt insignia, to please come forward for placing the insignia on the shirt. Thank you, Jordan and Taylor. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. At this time, will Lieutenant General Lowe come forward to administer the oath of office? Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, John Peter Ronick II. Do you solemnly swear? Do you solemnly swear? That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Montana. The Constitution of the State of Montana. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. And the Governor of the State of Montana. And the Governor of the State of Montana. That I make this obligation freely. That I make this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental re reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties of Major General. And that I will discharge the duties of Major General. In the Air National Guard. In the Air National Guard. Of the state of Montana. The state of Montana. Upon which I am about to enter. About which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, General Lowe. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The United States Air Force authorizes a personal flag to those who warrant them by the virtue of their office. Historically, a general officer flag was utilized primarily during military exercises and on the field of battle to signify the location and the presence of the general officer. These flags were often designed at great expense and personally approved by the general officer. This wide variety of colors and symbols often depicted the personality of the general. The modern version of the general officer flag was first authorized in 1903 by the War Department. In 1947, all United States Air Force major general officers of the line were authorized an aquamarine blue flag with a white star and a gold fringe. This flag, signifying the presence of a major general, will be present at all military 
functions. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you for the first time Major General John P. Ronick II. Mike uh, always tries to anticipate me as my exec, so love him. Thank you. <laughs> uh, where do you start? Um, and I thought about this, uh, sir. Uh, how do you start uh, something like this, uh, which uh, I, uh, I'm worthy of, unworthy, I really believe, uh, of this, but so privileged. But where do I start? I've got to start with my Lord and uh, for, for the blessings he gave to me for family, friends, and service, you know. And I got to end with that too. So just to know that I would not be here because of that, the blessings that I had, and and him being with me in this, in this every day in this journey. Uh, so I just got to shout out that first. Um, this is uh, tough because it's really going to be just me. Of, uh, of I, I stand here because of you here and many of you that are watching virtually and those that are unable to attend, uh, you don't get anywhere in life on your own. And I, I'm, I am a firm believer of that. And uh, I'm going to try to acknowledge some people that really had uh, impact in my life and, and in my service. And uh, if I, I'm going to miss people, I know it. I thought about it a lot. So if I wake up screaming in the middle of the night because I remembered somebody and you get a phone call of me from 2 in the morning, I just remembered, I forgot you. So do not be uh, shocked if you get a phone call from me just to, just to give you a personal thanks uh, with it. Uh, General Lowe, uh, thank you for officiating uh, for me here today. Um, uh, you came on board and uh, I was so excited. You're the right person at the right time for the next director. Uh, you have no idea how important his role is right now for the Air National Guard and having conversations with him Hang on, Air Force. Uh, we're, we're going to, he's going to make a difference, and this is really good. We need a strong Air Force. He's going to make the strong Air Force because of a strong Air National Guard. Thank you so much for doing this. I just asked for a quick, can we do a quick virtual with this family at the lake, you know? We could maybe be, you know, you call in from the boat. We could get in a Wi-Fi signal or something like that. I said, no, hell no, I'm coming. <laughs> no, I'm coming to Montana. And I just went, he didn't even think twice. And, uh, Thank you for coming out here and uh, making a difference as your first stop in this COVID environment to do something uh, for us. So thank you so much with that. Um, Governor, thank you uh, for your attendance here. Uh, again, uh, very humbled and odd for uh, your, your, what you've done for the state as a commander in chief and what you've done for the Montana Air and Army National Guard and what you had done in this COVID environment. Uh, this is just amazing. We did a flight in the F-15. Um, General O and actually General Quinn actually mentioned uh, we probably would not have landed if it weren't for gas. Uh, we had a blast, and uh, it was uh, it was a wonderful time. We, we we had a lot of fun out over the great state, uh, flying the the uh, the F-15. So thank you for being here. Uh, my best to you, and uh, your attendance is just 
just awe-inspiring. General Quinn, um, I also gave you a flight too. Uh, not long, but uh, uh, again, both of you, uh, somehow I did not either make you feel like, oh, this guy's not worthy of even being in uniform or whatever it is. Uh, you kind of kept me on and uh, served for your uh, accepting me as uh, to come here and, and uh, be in the leadership positions and through my career. And most of all, uh, I think for both of you to submit me forward for to go forward nationally and also to uh, put me in for a, a COE, which is a cer certificate of eligibility to go to the next level if, if desire needed. Uh, and then General Lowe uh, saw that with others to say, uh, I guess he's worth uh, not quite retiring yet. Let's uh, bring him back. So uh, I appreciate that and I'll talk a little bit at the end about that. Uh, but Gerald Quinn and, and, and Governor, uh, as the commanders here, um, couldn't, couldn't ask for better in the whole 54, so I'll brag about that, even though I've been serving the 54 for a little bit here. COVID, uh, crazy to see uh, uh, this audience, and we're separated like we are, and to deal with this, 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 this pandemic. Uh, it's been tough decisions on y'all and how we've had to manage this. Thank you for making it happen. Um, but. It's, it's, a, it's a terrible thing. Uh, it separates people from their lives, some, and it separates us from each other. We're not designed to be like this. And I do hope we figure this out. The good Lord and all of us working together uh, will we'll figure this out so we can get back to how we really, we really do as, as human beings and how do we serve with each other. So with that, um, I do appreciate those that have signed in virtually uh, and uh, I think that's just important that we're able to have the technologies these days to be able to do that. And now we're continuing to fight this and go on. So I'm going to kind of shift over a little bit virtually a little bit because there's just some key people that just could not be here. And uh, it pains me. I think it probably pains them just as much to not be here. Uh, my mom uh, and my dad. Uh, my mom when uh, who's in Minnesota. Uh, and of course, uh, it's tough to travel. And uh, she wanted to be here. She actually wanted to be here a couple of weeks ago for my daughter Taylor's wedding. Uh, and uh, these are tough conversations right now because there's some significant events we want to be together. And mom, I love you. I, uh, the flowers, I hope they showed up. I know they did. And, uh, and just to know that my love for there. And John, of course, your husband, uh, Korean War vet, uh, to do that. My dad uh, in Arizona with his wife, Karen. Uh, Love you both. Uh, my dad, he's always asked me, when you get the next star, when you get the next It's not like he's satisfied where I'm at. It's just like, <laughs> well, congratulations, when's your next star coming? I go, well, you got to be kidding me. I should have never gotten the first one in the first place. Uh, so, okay, there you go, but I think I'm done. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best at that, but Dad uh, and, and Karen, uh, your love for me shines all the time, and thank you for, for, for being there always for me through my flying career when it first started back when I was a, a teenager, and now here I am. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, my family that's out there also. I got brothers and sisters, um, and uh, they've been just key. I come from a family of, including me, ten. Okay, uh, yeah, we're that Catholic family, okay. Uh, but it is uh, great to see that w what we, we grew up, and we grew up on a lake, and we had some of those. Just, that's why I do what I do. I just want to bring that forward. And thank you for you, uh, for you attending and supporting me in my career. Uh, some of my sisters and brothers probably uh, from my sailing experiences probably don't have the fondest memories. Uh, I was rather a ruthless skipper especially when we race, and they probably have horror stories from it, but uh, I think I've tapered down a little bit, sir. I've given, I've relaxed a little bit, and, uh, and uh, to do that. So my brothers and sisters are out there. Uh, thank you for your attendance and, and your spouses also. Um, I have some friends out there. I got some high school buddies, uh, and we had a little texting going back and forth. So uh, we, we go way back from uh, hunting and sailing and uh, a lot of fun times. Just a, you know, sometimes you look at your friends and they really shaped you that you got in the right crowds. I was blessed to be in the right crowd and they were a lot of fun. Uh, we were kind of nerdy, but we had fun and uh, we did some, some pretty cool things. Um, out there also, I want to, uh, I, and I hope that the invite got to him, I hope uh, it did, but General Rice, uh, I'd have to have a special shout out to him. Um, he's the guy that kind of pulled me out of the state. Uh, I've tried my best to, to, to kind of get to be known a little bit and what can I do, what can I do, you know, you kind of stand at the door and, and uh, it was tough. But uh, 
I just got into an exercise in Korea, and I'm just kind of going through this exercise in Korea, and I get this phone call in the middle of the night, and he goes, Hoops, what are you doing? I'm going, well, I'm sleeping, but uh, what do you need, sir? Uh, he says, uh, I need you to come out to be my A58 director. I, and uh, I go, okay, uh, right now? He said, well, how soon? He says, well, I'm in Korea for another couple of weeks, and uh, he says, I need you to come out here soon, and I want you to do this, and I kind of go, well, let me think about it. Can I talk to Tracy? Yeah, sure, talk to Tracy, but just tell her. It'll be fun. And that was his thing. He just told me it will be fun, and uh, sir, it was fun. Uh, and uh, I, the, the work out there, A+. Plus. After I did the, the, the piece, that was kind of a gap filler, kind of a, a, a pitch hitter designated heater. I don't know if I really qualify anything long term, but I'm a pretty good guy to call in for a pinch hitting job. He let me go off to the uh, uh, off back and I kind of substituted because I kind of figured out the Pentagon a little bit. So I kind of backfilled through the Odang office and you know the turn there, sir. Uh, so I come in there and help out when they, they were traveling. And then uh, I thought that's great. I'm going to get close to retiring and uh, it did not happen. He said, oops, I need you again. And uh, went back to, uh, back to the 5'8 again. Shock and awe to the, f the team back there, and they kind of went, oh, I can't believe you're back, but I'm back, and uh, they accept me with, with, with great arms. So uh, with that said, uh, General Rice retired. Nancy, my best to you uh, with, uh, with your conditions and stuff like that. I know you're doing well, and General Rice had some sacrifices at the end with Nancy, but uh, my, my love and appreciation for you both uh, really was good, and then to have General Lowe follow on in your footsteps, uh, there's some great things happening there, and I'm just just glad to be part of it, just part of the conversation. Uh, I go around the room real quick, uh, if I don't mind. Buell uh, took over for me as the uh, A-tag, and uh, congratulations, great job with the wing now with uh, there, so uh, I'll do everything I can to help you to get some exposure out there because I know the quality of work that you do. And same with Potsy, uh, General Weber, the Chief of Staff here. Uh, we've got some caliber geos for you, sir, so hopefully you'll look at them strongly and I think you're going to find out that uh, we give results. We're kind of humble people, kind of like people in Colorado, but uh, we, we are results driven. Got a couple chiefs here, Chief Otto, Chief Zumbrun, okay, and then uh, there's Chief Huffman in the back, okay. Uh, if anybody in leadership has ever figured out, uh, if you're going to succeed, especially in command, uh, if you don't have a strong senior enlisted, a chief with you, uh, you're not going to do so good. I know you have a good one with Chief Anderson, you're going to probably get a new one pretty soon. But I had three of the best, and uh, they picked me up many times, and uh, Chiefs, thank you for that. Uh, uh, there, there's Chief, but then there's Command Chiefs, and uh, you guys did some fantastic work for me. I love that. I'm going to kick over to this side of the room uh, with um, some of my family members here. So Papa, Senior Master Sergeant, retired. Uh, Tracy's father um, and the guard here, avionics, uh, did a lot of things. Yes, he's back in the day when I was in the 106, okay. Uh, we do a date ourselves. And uh, with that, Todd and Steph, thank you. Tracy's brother and sister-in-law and Ty, uh, who's here now, retired, but uh, Title V kind of guy, doing great things in QA. And Laura, thank you for that. Uh, so that you're here. I got some other retired GOs and, and officers here. Uh, General Livingston, um, he's uh, been a, just a, a strong supporter uh, of my career. And uh, he's the one that said, uh, pulled me aside one day, says, hey, what do you think about Wing Command? Uh, thank you for uh, picking me out of the group and uh, saying, here you go. Thank you for that. Uh, General Tamberg, um, Rex, um, you knew me when I was a baby in the, in the, in the 106s, you know, and you, 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 you just, you, you always had that personal touch, and you always took care of me and Tracy, and you and Marlene, and uh, that was just, uh, I, you, it, it taught me how to take care of people, and uh, sometimes I always have to think about you to make sure I'm doing it right. Even though there's a big issue going on, you didn't have a problem turning to that young airman and taking care of him, so, so thank you for being here with that. Uh, Pat Polly and Cheryl, uh, wing commander uh, of past, uh, you gave me my first group commander job, and uh, I think you had to pick me out of the herd too, and uh, thank you for doing that. We've also, uh, Tracy, we've been uh, sailing buddies from a couple of trips uh, to BVI's in Greece, so great friends, and uh, thank you for uh, seeing something in me that maybe I didn't. Doc Bozeman back there, uh, thank you as a, as a doc and a friend and uh, one of the best comedians I think I know, so <laughs> good there. 
Uh, I see Paige back there. Uh, Tracy said, you better have Paige in there. She's right. It's about families, okay? And Paige is, is, is that hallmark for families and taking care of families here. So thank you for being here. You've kept us going. It's been hard on us since we left the wing because we, we lost that closer connection with families. It crushes Tracy every day. Uh, she can't go and be roll up her sleeves with families, and uh, that's hard. But thank you for staying connected with us and helping with that. Um, Chief Kelly back there, thank you as the Wing Command Chief here. I know you're going to be retiring soon. Chief Halco, uh, again, some great chiefs here. That's going to be uh, make the difference with it. Corey, uh, Red Horse Commander, uh, great stuff going on uh, with the Red Horse. Glad you're, you're kind of coming back, too. Uh, so uh, it, it, it's, it's good the second time is, is the first, so that's all I can say. So yeah, yeah. And uh, have you gotten your elk yet? No elk yet, see, that's all right. <laughs> and then uh, Art back there, uh, thanks for your great invocation. He retires tomorrow, okay? So if you can't, also uh, thank you for your appreciation, but uh, thank you, uh, Art, for your service to this great country, and uh, thank you for being here on one of your last days for me. Um, in the back, uh, I appreciate everybody, Helen, and everybody. Uh, with the uh, with the uh, the honor guard, the, the singing of the national anthem. Thank you so much for what you've done uh, to make this special, even in this environment here. Uh, it, it it is really cool. I am so glad, sir. You did not say let's just do it virtually. Thank you for stepping up and saying uh, it, it. You know, it, it's way special, and, and even though I, I feel undeserving at times. Um, Major Loy, soon to be Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel Loy. So thank you, Mike, uh, for, he came out here. I, I, was, I, I go to B-58, and one of the first things I kind of asked, well, who's my exec? Well, uh, she's leaving. <laughs> so I got to find a new one. Uh, and uh, he had kind of given me a hint. Hey, if you see anything out in D.C., uh, let me know, and then maybe I'll see if I can't come on out and help you out. So I said, hey, how do you want to be exec? He goes, what is that? <laughs> uh, you know how that works, sir. And, uh, and uh, he came out and uh, jumped in the exec job and uh, leading the pack of, of how that works out there. So he anticipates me and he kept me going. And uh, I just say, Mike, thank you. I hope for bigger and better things for you. But uh, thanks for what you do with the 5-8 and making things happy. And I think it's kind of fun to watch a guy that comes out there, hasn't been out there before, and he goes in some of those briefings, his eyes are just wide open and goes, I can't believe what you guys are talking about. Uh, but it's, it's, it's good stuff for the Air Guard. Thank you for doing that uh, with it. Um, where is Kim in here? Did she sneak out? I can't see. There's Kim way back there. Uh, I brought her on as my uh, admin assistant when I was wing commander, and she's been there ever since for me and Tracy. So thank you, Kim, for all you've done uh, for us. Um, again, out there for the, the, the airmen of, uh, at the headquarters, uh, at the horse and it for sure at the wing, uh, special place uh, for, for me. Um, just a couple things just on my career as I can kind of close up. Um, you know, I was just so blessed to be part of the wing up through wing command uh, and then I left uh, to go down to headquarters. Most people thought I retired at, out of wing command, so that's one. Okay, so then I kind of come back and I thought you retired and they keep looking at me because I was that old guy. And, uh, and, I, and they kind of got used to me kind of popping in once in a while. And then I left uh, from JFHQ as a tag to back to DC, and they thought that was retirement number two. Oh, he's gone, he's gone, thank goodness. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, I pop up on the screen uh, for a promotion. I thought, is this a, pro is this a retirement or a promotion? They, they kind of had to QC me a little bit. So yes, I'm not the youngest kid around, but uh, Air Force standards keep me in shape, and I think I'm, I'm still producing. So, yeah, I never thought uh, I, I'd get past major, let alone a major general. So oh, who would have thought? And there's some days I'm sure you looked at me going like, <laughs> damn, kid, uh, uh, good luck. And uh, it, it worked out. So I just it was a blessed career uh, with it. Um, but to, to work at the, at the national level and not only know how great Montana is, but to now fight for the 54. Uh, man, I tell you, there are some great, great wings, great units, great states, the territories and districts. And I just loved that. I just loved trying to make it better, trying to get them to a better place, trying to make something happen. And I tell you, there's times, and I, at his level of conversations, uh, you just want to beat your head against the wall, but you just go back in there. You just go back in there, and uh, you just say, well, 
I did my piece, and eventually they're going to say, if you, if you don't listen, uh, we'll bring the wood chipper out. And that's really uh, the, the states, the governors, and, and, and Congress, okay, if they don't have a good plan. Uh, so we're able to reason and, and do some good stuff, but really it's just under your leadership, the director's leadership, and the team we have out there. I had a great 5-8 team that I worked for twice, and they were just wonderful people. I was promised that same team when I came back, but as soon as they came back, they picked them. And he grabbed one of the best ones, Dean Wolford and uh, Chad Tuttle, Snapper. Uh, those two moved right on, which they needed to do. Uh, but now I'm going, okay, who do I get? But I got great people, and I just want to know, Dean and Snapper, uh, you were huge to my, my, me being successful there, and the whole 5-8 team out there, because even a COVID environment, the products, the, the, the analysis all showed up, and it happened. I don't know how it happened with all that went on, but it was just wonderful. So it was good. With that, um, here I am. You're done. You, you, you let me come back uh, to my wife. Uh, a plus for the work, but it was, it was kind of in the, the, the F range for, for family, and uh, you, you saw where I live. And uh, so it was, it was time, and thank you for uh, letting me come back here. And also, let me go on to a Air Education Training Command. Uh, I think you put enough in my brain here. Uh, and uh, the relationships I've built, I can use that to go forward and, and hopefully make that a better place. And there's a lot of projects I got in my mind uh, I think the Guard can be uh, very effective in and make better airmen out there. So I'm very honored for that, that two-year stint, okay? And I'm sure uh, <laughs> my wife has taken notes and uh, we'll, we'll make sure that works and I'm able to at least half the time uh, have my, my, my head in, in Montana. Yeah, no, <laughs> sir. Uh, then finally, uh, I, I got to talk a, a little bit about uh, my, my, my close, my, my, my family. And, uh, this is the, the piece that uh, serving your country makes it very hard. And I've, I've maybe have abused that service a little bit too much by never knowing how to say no. Um, and that's just been hard. And uh, Tracy. I've, I've heard her say a few times, I'm done, but I know she doesn't mean it, okay? <laughs> I think, uh, but uh, she, uh, she did it. So, uh, Analia, I'll just start with you. Um, my oldest, um, I know you wanted to be here. There's some things uh, with, with health that she's working through right now, but she'll be just fine. But uh, she wanted to be here, but uh, just to know that we love you. And, uh, and uh, with you, Jason, Heidi, and Lee, Eli, um, uh, we're thinking about you, and I uh, can't wait to, to see you the, soon the next time. Um, Luke, Sarah, um, they, they live closest to us, and Helena, we get to see a lot of them. We're very blessed with that because they have also with them Rosie and Waylon, our two grandchildren, and they are a blast, okay? Uh, I don't remember hardly raising you guys, but I sure am remembering Waylon and Rosie. But Luke, for what you do in the CST and Sarah as a nurse, uh, I just, uh, I, we're just so blessed. And we get to see, see you uh, when we do, and, uh, and uh, you just bring joy to our lives. Jordan, a PA here at the medical group. Uh, she figured out what she's going to do, and uh, she just have, has launched. And Jordan has now uh, as a first lieutenant, soon to be a captain uh, in the Montana Guard here, medical group, making a difference. And uh, uh, she, loves, uh, she loves sailing with me, and uh, they all do. But uh, she loves the Hobie cat, and she gets mad at me when I will bring it out every year. But Jordan, uh, you're just awesome, so thank you for being here. Taylor, uh, with her husband Kyle, Air Force, they're moving to Alabama. He's a helicopter pilot at Maelstrom. Going to go be an instructor down at uh, Fort Rucker. And, uh, new chapter in her life. We just, about two weeks ago, we did their wedding. And uh, COVID environment, you know, how do we do this one? And uh, what we pulled it off, my wife, and, I mean, she was the, the Nazi out there making sure we did it, but then she kind of, she kind of said, okay, I think we're all right. And then we had a lot of fun. But uh, Taylor, your wedding was, it was, I'm so glad it, it pulled off. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen with you and Kyle, and the whole family was there. That was really, really special. I'm so glad I got back just in time. Thank you, sir, for releasing me so I could be there for that wedding. That was good. 
And then last, uh, uh, my son, Matt, uh, I'm hopefully watching virtually, uh, was selected uh, and is now at Advanced Air Force Base starting pilot training. Was a load master, deployed several times through college, and now is, uh, is going starting pilot training to be a 130 pilot. So how, how do you beat that? Um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's just so cool uh, with that. Uh, so that is really, I, I try to touch a lot of things. There's many I'm going to think about going, oh, so many family and friends that uh, I want to say I appreciate uh, that were just, that served and the family that touched my life has been spectacular. I'm just glad I'm able to do what I'm able to do for a little bit longer. But there's a time where me and Tracy, I'm going to be following her around and we're going to be doing some stuff. Uh, I don't think we're ever going to slow down, but uh, thanks, sweetie. With that said, uh, I want to give you something here. She doesn't like this, but uh, that's okay. So there's this gift. Now, you might look at the flowers, but it's, she's not looking at the flowers, if you know. She's looking at what's below it. Uh, she, is, uh, she loves antique type of furniture. We were in a store the other day, and she was kind of kept going by it. So I, me and Jordan kind of conspired. So she could probably care less about the flyers, but she loves this piece to do that. So, sweetie, uh, I want you to have this and to know that uh, this is so special for that. I'll set it down so you Where don't have to care. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we don't know. But thank you. Yeah. So with that said, thank you, sweetie. Give me a hug. <laughs> thank you, sweetie. I know I went long, uh, but again, I, uh, I, I've had a long, more, way longer career than I deserve. So thank you, sir, again for presiding, Gerald Quinn and, and, and Governor, for, for being here for this. Uh, I think I have a little more to give, and uh, I'm sure you're going to make a few calls, phone calls to me as, as I need to. So I'll be there, uh, but uh, thank you again for this and everybody. And I do, I don't know, my wife's trying to stand up here for some reason. Oh. Again, thank you all for this. I, I will close, that, uh, close like I open. Uh, thank you, Lord, for, uh, for my, my family, my friends, and, and the service I, I'm able to continue to do. So thank you all so much. Uh, I'm truly honored and humbled, and uh, God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, General Ronick. The men and women of the United States Air Force and the Air National Guard are proud of Major General Ronick and look forward to working with him as he takes on his new challenges. General Lowe invites everyone to join him in congratulating General Ronick and his family through a receiving line at the back of the room. Please stand and remain standing for the playing of the Air Force song, followed by the departure of the official party. <laughs> 